Hey, it's Adam again from the AM Podcast Network, and in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about something that a lot of people really don't want to talk about because one, they don't know how to do it, two, uh, perhaps it's just, it's kind of like a dirty word, and three, most podcasters end up being a hobby anyway, so uh, let's talk about monetizing your podcast, all right? So there's different ways. I wrote a pretty decent article on that on the AM Podcast Network if you go to the uh, uh, how-to section uh, it's right there and I give you a nice list and some ideas on how to do that so I think first we got to talk about why you're podcasting and I feel like if you are podcasting only primarily to make money you're probably doing it wrong because podcasts generally don't make money it's kind of like you know growing up and playing little league and then get into uh, some of the, the the bigger leagues all the way until you're in the major league baseball like like, what is it, 0.001% of all people will ever play Major League Baseball? So it's kind of like that in the podcast world, too. There are podcasters that make money, don't get me wrong, but not all make money just on their podcast. So you kind of have to accept whether it's a hobby, whether you might make a few bucks to go get a coffee and dinner, or if this is something that you're going to do, uh, you know, for, for life, I guess, or for at least a full-time job. So if you really think that your podcast is good enough and you are ready to go ahead and make some money, then let's talk about how to do it. All right, so first rule of thumb is you gotta have a website. I talk about it in every episode, everything I, I talk about, uh, whether it's writing, audio, or video, is you gotta have a website because you have to have a platform to put ads on or sell things, and if you don't, well, you're kinda shortchanging yourself. If the only thing you have is a podcast, you are gonna have a lot of difficulty making money. Assuming that you can get an advertiser to just you know pay you to, to ramble off a few things during your show, I, I just can't see that. I mean, maybe you know that's just me, but you want to have, and I used this yesterday in one of my Google posts, uh, is the more surface area you have for your creativity, the more likely you are to make a little bit of money out of it. So uh, what do I mean by that? I mean, if you have a website, if you have a blog, if you have social media websites, uh, if you have like a weekly newsletter, if you have a forum, if you have, I don't know, there's so many things you can add to that, right? A Wikipedia on your website, uh, perhaps two blogs, I don't know, and a podcast, so uh, in a pear tree, right? <laughs> so the point is the more you have to work with in order to present ads or merchandise or something like that, the more money you're going to make. Uh, the more content you develop, the more places you can put ads or, or you know, sell placement or whatever the case is. So that's rule number one. You've got to have a website. And once you're past that, now you have places to actually do things with. Now, most of the people look at Google and they look at Amazon. They look at different platforms. Uh, AdBright, uh, Skimlinks, I think, is one of them. So you can utilize all this and make that your go-to and just say, you know what? Just put AdSense on my website. We're done. That's it. No more, no more to talk about. But if that was the case, all these other things wouldn't exist. So if I have a podcast uh, and, and I want to monetize it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to create some rules. All right? Let's say my podcast episode is about 30 minutes long. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate it. Do I want to put one ad in my podcast or do I want to put 50? Well, if I put 50, nobody's going to want to listen to it ever. So I'm completely killing the idea. So I, I make that exaggeration because I want you to think about the time that your podcast is actually you know, running versus how many ads you're going to put in there. I would say for 30 minutes, appropriately, you could probably put two ads in there without turning people off. People understand that you need to make money, right? So if, whether it's stamps.com or, I don't know, cherries, berries, or whatever it is, if you want to read some ads, by all means, go ahead. Nobody's going to hate you for it. And if you can get those people to pay for it, that's awesome. Uh, another thing that people do with their podcasts, I've heard, is they'll do affiliate links. They'll say, hey, you know, go, go to here.com and forward slash, you know, podcast name and get 20% off, right? I don't know how effective that is, one, because I've never actually done that, but two, as a listener, usually I'm on the go. I'm on the train or I'm driving or you know I'm trying to consume a podcast when I'm away from the computer and when I'm really not trying to shop. So from my, my thought process there is, if you hit me with an affiliate link, I either have to really like that product to remember to do it, or to it, I'm just never gonna do it. I'm just gonna be like, yep, yep, nice ad, bro. Cool story, and I'm moving on. That's it. So 
I don't know about how good the affiliate links are, work inside the podcast. I'm not talking about on the website because over there, that's easy. They're already on your website. They just click and then they're, they're on it. So I'm discussing right now just in the audio itself. Uh, so you can sell a couple reads. You can absolutely, you know, spout off some affiliate links. Um, my favorite move would be create a store that goes along with your website, or maybe you can uh, do a zazzle.com or something like that and, and maybe create something for your podcast. You know, if you're an entrepreneur uh, podcast, maybe you say, you know, I make money from home, you know, I don't, I know it's lame, but work with me. I'm kind of doing this from, right. So you can tell them like, Hey, check out our store at the end of the podcast and say, listen, everything you buy goes, you know, like, uh, goes to the support in the show, or maybe, uh, you're, maybe you're a veteran friendly podcast. You say, you know, 15% for every sale we make goes to wounded warrior. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can, you can present that and make money and also do good things like, you know, contribute something to wounded warrior. Uh, you know, many podcasts would probably earn a lot of respect for doing such. Okay. Now let's, let's go, let's kind of widen up a little bit and let's talk about the overall platform. So to this week or, well, I guess technically last week, somebody actually wanted to make potato salad on Kickstarter. And they said, look, I just need $10. They did a, a little thing. I know this thing's been all over the news, so you probably already heard this, but I'm going to use an example. If he can get $50,000 to make a $10 potato salad, why could you not do a Kickstarter for your podcast and ask for like 500 bucks? Hey, I want to buy a couple nice mics and I'll buy a mixing board, 500 bucks, you know, and then put everything on the side of what you're willing to give uh, your donators and just move on. I think that's an excellent way, right? And you don't have to do it just once, like maybe quarterly you do a Kickstarter for your podcast, you know, but hopefully you're taking that money and legitimately investing it into your podcast and then people will be like, oh, okay, he actually did something or she did something with that money last time. Yeah, I'll throw him an extra 10 bucks this time, you know, and you can build that consistency and actually, you know, earn some money that way. Uh, I really suggest that you don't like just take that money and pocket it. I mean, that, that kind of feels, I know that if I'm your donator the first time and I know that you didn't like improve your, your production, you didn't hire like a designer or a video editor or something with that money, you probably never get another dollar from me. So, all right. So if we do the crowdfunding source, I, I guess uh Patron is another one, 800 pound gorilla in the room. Uh, if I remember, uh, Guinness told me that a little, little uh, buddy of mine that I've been kind of collaborating with over the last couple of weeks. He threw it out at me and uh, I'm not familiar personally with, with Patron, but from what I hear, good things. So another crowdsourcing idea, maybe that's, that's the ticket. I'm not sure. Uh, whatever your preference is, maybe check out both platforms and kind of see what you're more comfortable with. But they work. Just take advantage of them. There's no reason not to if you're really looking for ways to monetize. Other ones. I use a, a service a couple years back. Um, uh, it was called blogads.com. And you can go in there and you say, hey, look, I have this blog. Here's my traffic. Here's, here's what I have on a daily basis. And I would like to sell these ads in these positions. And then you take the code from their website and you put it in your WordPress and you can just sell through the third party. Uh, they'll, they'll connect you with advertisers and you can make a few hundred bucks a, a week if your podcast is strong and your content on your website is strong. But you have to have traffic for that. Uh, I think it starts at like 5,000 page views a week, maybe. Uh, it's been a long time since I used it, but there's other uh, there's other platforms for that too. There's buy, sell ads. Uh, I believe that's the .com version. And just type in like, uh, you know, blog ads or something like that. And it'll come up where you can actually go ahead and register. And then you create, you know, your ad spaces. And, you know, if you want to make a couple thousand dollars a month and you're decent, not a bad way to go. I highly recommend it. One of my favorites is merchandise. If your listeners are loyal and you've given them something to talk about, they'll probably buy a t-shirt from you or a mug. And I know you're like, Oh my God, but Adam, I really don't want to like start producing things. You're in luck. You don't have to. Uh, matter of fact, a simple little, uh, couple keystrokes there. You'll be on Alibaba.com, Alibaba.com. And I think they have Alibaba express.com. And I imagine you could probably find tons of other places, uh, maybe a look through like Etsy.com or something like that. What you're basically trying to do is find like, um, find that, the website 
or those people at home that are kind of churning out products. I know a few years ago, I used to own a t-shirt shop. I designed my own t-shirts. I had screen printing, had sublimation, and I could crank out anything from mugs to t-shirts. And then I also did a lot of business overseas with uh, factories that would, you know, produce keychains, uh, mugs. You'd be surprised. You know, you could probably de develop a product that costs maybe five dollars total to include shipping, the design work. Uh, all of that is pretty easy. You put it in a package, you give it to them, you give them the money, and then like a week later, boom, it arrives at your your front door. You put it on your website. If you have say a thousand active listeners that really like you and they're definitely loyal and they're tuning in on a regular basis, you just tell them like, hey. I got this t-shirt, it completely supports the show, and it's 20 bucks. Even though it's a little bit more expensive when, than what they would probably spend, even at like Walmart or some of the other stores, they, you know, JCPenney's, or whatever stores you shop at, right? The fact that they know it's actually like kind of a, a, a drive to give the show and the platform money, they're willing to open up the wall a little bit more if they think that it's worth it. So if you bring value to your listeners, Go ahead and try it. Sell them a t-shirt. You know, sell them a coffee mug. Sell them something that they can connect with your podcast while they're listening to you and, and enjoying your website. And you'd be surprised. You do, I don't know, five bucks a t-shirt and you maybe make a hundred of them. So you, you got 500 bucks up front that you're investing. Uh, it, that's assumed that you can find that deal, right? I know where they are. I could probably search if I, if I went through and I really tried uh, finding somebody. I know I could find this for about a, 500 bucks. You put them in your store or, you know, a forum or wherever you connect with your, you know, with your audience, you tell them 20 bucks and next, you know, you got like 10 grand. Wait a minute. I got to do the math. A hundred times 20. That is not correct. It is $2,000. So you can turn $500 into $2,000 eh, possibly overnight. Matter of fact, uh, one of my favorite YouTube channels I listen to, they just did a t-shirt, uh, pretty nice design. They could probably get that design done maybe on like elance.com for, you know, 20, 30 bucks. I assume that you have no graphic skills yourself. Uh, if you do, that's even better. Save yourself a little bit of dough, make yourself a nice creative design, ship it out to a factory that will make it for you and then sell them and make a little bit of money. That to me is how I would do it. I personally, I don't like ads. I hate them. I don't click on them. They don't, I love how companies are all like, well, you know, it's always for an improved ad experience. What ad experience? I don't want it to begin with. So to me, I, I don't know. I just, I don't like ads. I won't read ads in my podcast. I won't, I just don't find value there because at the end of the podcast, I would prefer to to have somebody wear a t-shirt with that, you know, says like ampodcastnetwork.com or something like that. You know, a nice funny design, you know, maybe I don't highlight the website, but maybe, you know, sun on the sleeve or maybe in the back collar here, you know, just to let them know it's from me and give them a nice design, something they'd want to wear with pride. And then it also helps you with like free advertising. You know, if they're wearing it around, somebody would be like, oh, I, what is that? What are you wearing there? Come here, you. So utilize that it's free advertising you make a little bit of money yes you have to do a little bit more leg work because you actually have to like work with a factory or a company and have your products made but at the end it's a dual sword not only are you bringing in a little dough somebody's going to wear it out there and they're going to advertise for you so one of my favorite platforms always merchandise uh to do e-commerce pretty cheap you can always set up uh, i guess like a shopify sell things on ebay or amazon or you can do, if you already have a website and you're already doing WordPress, go ahead, get a WooCommerce or I, I work with like Press the Shop and Magento, but those are pretty heavy. Most of the podcasters that are going to be listening to this or watching me, you know, do this YouTube video, you're probably not going to be doing, uh, maybe, I, I don't know. I guess it depends how aggressive. I, I would say if you are a podcast network and you have like, 12, 15 shows and, and you were doing merchandise for all the different shows and you were doing a lot, maybe you would do like press the shop. Magento would be pretty heavy. But anyway, this is an e-commerce video. Let's keep it on target. So, all right, we got merchandise. Uh, we got third party uh, banner ads. Banner ads suck, by the way. They only have like 0.01% click through. I mean, 10, 15 years ago, everybody was clicking on banner ads. Nobody likes them. So you have to get creative. And you have to find what works. So 
I'll save that for another video as well. I know I'm like, oh, another video, another video, right? I, I promise I will do these. I have a lot up in here, you know, so I will share my ideas and hopefully I'll get you on target for all this. So, okay, what did I miss? I missed, uh, I don't know, there's always different ways. There's so many different ways. I have books on like guerrilla marketing. I have uh, all kinds of ways to, to do this. Uh, contextual ads, you can probably sell a company on like uh, a, a keyword in your, in your uh, blog post. You know, you could sell them something like, um, like, hey, you know, for 50 bucks, I'll go ahead and, and I'll put this anchor text in my thing naturally. But I, I do suggest, I do suggest, if you're gonna do something like that, please at least denote that it's a sponsored like placement. Do not try to trick your audience because once they find out like you're stuffing them full of cookies or you know, you're being deceptive with your advertising, eh, they're probably gonna walk away. Maybe not all if, if you're still giving them good quality, but I wouldn't do that to my audience. I love the people that, that have taken the time to read my stuff or listen to me or watch me. So I really try never to deceive them because I feel like that just breaks the trust. So if you're gonna like sell stuff on your website like that, be very careful. Uh, Google could absolutely give you a penalty and nobody really wants that. So if, if you're running out of ideas, make sure that you get into the AM Podcast Network, uh, into the forum and you know, send me a little message or, or put it in there like, hey, can anybody give me some tips on here? Oh, one thing I almost forgot, uh, social media, sponsored posts. Now, some people don't like this stuff, but let's say you have like, you know, 50,000 true followers on Twitter and they're not all robots. Some companies may actually approach you and say, look, if you send out a promotional tweet, I'll pay you a hundred bucks per. And that could be some quick cash. You don't have to break a sweat. You're like, yep, here it is. 140 characters. Bam. Boom. hundred bucks. Thank you. You can go ahead and PayPal it to me. And that could be a ticket. So if you have a big following, not everybody does, but I would say for Facebook posts, you probably need to have somewhere around 500,000. If you have like a million like actual subscribers and they're not all robots and you're not like, you know, buying Facebook likes by like tens of thousands, you could probably earn some money. Some people earn way into like the $500, a few thousand dollars per post, depending on how serious their, their following is. I don't know, that might be Oprah Winfrey uh, style, but anyway, you get my point. If you bring value to an advertiser, you can leverage it to make money. Again, personally, I do not do this. I like to give my, my audience the best possible user experience when they're on my website or they're listening to me or they're watching me. I hate, hate, hate putting advertising on any of my platforms. I haven't done it very much over the last uh, 15 years. I think once I got banned from like Google AdSense, that was it. I, I think I mentioned that in the post I had mentioned it. Like I don't trust third party advertising things like Google and Amazon because they have control. So like I remember back in, I think it was like 2003, I was trying AdSense for the first time. I mean, this was kind of like, it was brand new. No, that's probably not legit. No, I think that's pretty legit. So I had like six months, I get to like the $100 payout moment. I'm like three days away and I'm, I'm sitting there waiting for the email. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get paid. This is unbelievable. Six months to make this hundred bucks. And I check my email and it says, boom, you've been banned from AdSense. Don't ever talk to us again. I was like, what? And yeah, I have never, ever, ever recommended Google AdSense since then. Uh, I can't tolerate that kind of stuff. They took advantage of me, even though it was only a few clicks. You know, I, I thought we were gonna have a good relationship. Google does not give uh, customer service. They don't unban, like they're just too big for their britches. So my personal recommendation, it has nothing to do with hate. It's just, I prefer not to do advertising, especially with third party platforms. To me, it's too dangerous. Once I, once I give away my content or I give somebody the okay to do what they want with my platform, uh, they tend to take advantage. I don't know anybody that has not, never taken advantage of that. So I recommend that you would do the same. Protect your content, protect your IP, and keep it on your platform, sell directly if you can, and don't, don't put it in somebody else's ballpark. It, that's when danger ensues. So, okay, I, man, I have covered so much stuff. I just would like to say, if, if, you, if you're really thinking about monetizing your podcast, take your time, research, make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons, 
and making making sure that it's not going to push your users away. Because uh, a perfect example, I was reviewing a podcast uh, last week, and for anybody that doesn't know, I do review podcasts and platforms for free. I do it in AM Podcast Network uh, in the forum section underneath podcast feedback. All somebody has to do is request it or send me a message on uh, social media, wherever you can uh, link up with me. And I give like a very a thorough, in-depth review. If I have time, I go through your social medias, I go through your website, your logo, your audio, and I, I mean, I give you the down and dirty. I even rate you if you want. You know, if your audio sucks, I'll give you four out of 10, boom. Okay, so it's not about that. But I'm saying it's there, and I explain that to tell you that I did this for an individual, and then I went to his, his page, and then I realized he's part of a network, and I was trying to like, trying to figure out like, his page layout was good. The color was good. And then when I, I kind of looked closer, I realized all the content on the page that surrounded the little play button and, it, and his little uh, image were ads. And if they weren't ads, they were upsells. You know, uh, hire me for this or click here if you want to buy a book from Amazon or, hey, if you like what you see, you can send me your, your IRA or, or, you know, uh, it was awful. It was, it was a terrible experience for me as a reviewer. And I wrote that in a review. I was, I was very adamant, like, this is horrible. This is a terrible user experience. I feel like the only thing you're in for is the money and you have offered me nothing, but I, I mean, I might as well have been on Craigslist at this point. So I use this as an example to implore you to please step away from the computer. If you have the desire to take advantage of your users. If your only influence is money, stop what you're doing and go find something else to do. I don't want you in my, in my hobby. I don't want you in, my, in, in the zone, right? I want you to do this because you care, you have something to offer, and the bottom line is not money. So I don't mind if you make money. I have no issues with you, you know, taking your wife out to dinner because you worked on your podcast all week. I don't mind you, you know, reaping some benefits from, from what you sowed. So please don't take that away. I want you to make money. I want you to make money properly. And I want it to be a win-win for everybody involved to include you, your listeners, and anybody that might find you on Google. I think that's super important, right? I mean, the whole point of having online content is always about the end user and about what we offer them. And it's not about advertising it and how you make uh, ads more relevant to them or how you refine with big data, you know, how to sell better to them or how to take advantage we're more than that. We're not robots, right? We are creators, whether it's through the writing or the podcast or the video or engaging people on Skype or Google Hangouts, wherever you are, it should always be for the benefit of the listeners. And if on top of that, you want to throw a layer of e-commerce and you want to sell them a little something, by all means, I'm not going to attack you for it. In fact, I'm probably going to help you. And if you already have this set up, let's say Let's say you are the person that's already been doing this for years and things are great, but maybe you want a little bit of help. Maybe you want me to review it or you want somebody else to review it and say, you know what, what you're doing here is great. And if you want, you could probably monetize this a little bit better if you just do this. It's amazing what happens when we collaborate as creators and we just offer, you know, 20 minutes on Skype with, with a couple people. And I could, I could tweak somebody real quick and just say, you know what, you're doing great. But if you just change this one little area, you might find yourself in a better position in Google search or more users, more listeners, more subscribers. I think as podcasters, as a group and a whole, it's important that we come together. And it's not about, you know, hey, I'll charge you, you know, $300 an hour for, for a good review on your website. I'll do that for free. You know why? Because if I do it for you for free, whether it's good or bad, more than likely down the road, if I ask you like, hey, look, kind of in a pinch, uh, I need a co-host or maybe I need you to review my stuff. You know, I always need an outside look too, right? I'm not perfect you will probably more than likely say, you know what? Hmm. The Adam guy, he was, he was pretty decent to me last year. You know what the heck? Let's do this. And that's kind of the relationship that we need to build. So whether it's advertising or, or some other look, or maybe, you know, your audio, 
I don't know, can't we all just sit down and help each other? Is it that much to ask? I don't think so. If you could just say, hey, this week I'm gonna put 20 minutes aside for one person or a small group of people and I'm gonna do something positive in the community, I think you might even feel better or you'll at least feel like you've given back a little bit. And it's amazing, even if you're not a pro, any value can be assigned to an opinion. So hopefully that you think about that, uh, provide it into the community. I always recommend giving back a little bit, whether you're in the Facebook group or the, the Reddit or the Google Plus, and there's all kinds of groups, right? There's all kinds of places that you can give back. So take that information, take everything that I just talked about as far as putting ads or merchandise into your podcast or going and getting crowdsourced through uh, Kickstarter or Patron. I think there's a few other, uh, a few other avenues that you can use as well. I think it's important that you design, you design your media first and then down the road when you feel like you've, you've kind of made it. Right. Because if you only have like five subscribers, the last thing we should be talking about right now is monetizing your platform. Right. So going in, you probably already need to know, like, hey, I'm going to need a minimum here a few months. Let me get my feet wet. Let me kind of gain some exposure. Let me get people listening first. Right. You don't do monetizing up front. You do it when you when it's appropriate. So knowing when it's appropriate is key. I want you to take your time. I want you to build quality content. Please, please, please don't just hire writers off of Elance or or Mechanical Turk and say, hey, I just need a billion articles and I I don't care what they say. I just need to build this thing, right? Stop, stop, stop. I wish I had a rolled up newspaper. No, no, no. Take your time. Design a product that matters. Build a website people can care about that they if if at the end of the day if nothing else if people don't want to bookmark in their browser your website then you're not doing something right your audience should want to do something with your content there should be some kind of call to action and when you find that sweet spot it's okay to monetize it a little bit so hopefully you take my advice Hopefully this is worth something to you. If it's not, then I apologize. But if it is, please like the video, subscribe. I'm going to be doing this on a regular basis. I want to be part of what you do. I don't want to just tell you like, hey, this is how you do your RSS feed. I want to be a part of you providing high quality content on a consistent basis. I want to teach you what I do with communication. Uh, Writing is my passion. Video will become my passion. This, I I admit, I don't do this very often. I never really have. So I'm going to, I'm going to plow through this one way or the other, right? We're going to do this. I'm going to learn how to do high quality content just as well as you are. We're going to do this together. It's a community thing. I'm here to help you. Hopefully you're willing to do the same for me. And if that's the case, I can't wait to get started with you. So by all means, share this if you if you want anything. If you want anything in particular, comment below. I will respond to you. I promise. Join the AM podcast community if you want some more direct access to me. I'm always on there, and I'm always like going back and forth with people. I love conversation. I think it improves everybody involved. And so, if that's the case, I can't wait to see you. So that's the end of this video. Until next time, I'm Adam with AM Podcast Network, and it's been a pleasure doing this.